I can't leave for five minutes without everything going to hell. Ah, well, Laura is asleep. You know, fairy tales won't do it anymore. It's Greek mythology <laughs> or nothing. You know, we better find a bakery that does baklava. She's going to lapse into culture shock. It's very strange being back. I mean, it's, it's good. Oh. It was the most glorious vacation I have ever had in my life. Really, the magic kind. Now, wherever we go, there's magic. Let's prove it. Let's, let's run away tonight somewhere cold where we can huddle together for body warmth. <laughs> Look at this. What? You have work. You have work to do. Work. Oh, and mail. Oh, you know what I want? I want a graceful, whitewashed windmill. You know, that someone would make over into a beautiful little cottage just big enough for us. Us meaning you, me, Laura, Stuart, Scott, Cindy. I love being together with all of us, but no, I mean us. Us. You, me, and Laura. Hmm. It's obviously not just a bill. Baby boy, look at they that. They all look like Winston Churchill at first, don't they? Oh, they don't. They're all gorgeous. Oh, she's well. And she says the baby is well. Oh, I can't wait to look at this little guy. I can't wait to see them. We may have an announcement of our own for too long. Don't jump the gun, okay? I'm not jumping the gun. Everything was absolutely perfect. The Aegean, so blue, it was almost purple. The sunlight reflecting off those white walls, a sense of history, so resonant you could almost touch eternity. You ever thought about writing travel brochures? And, and the cabin at sea, the things that went on in that room? Hmm, I think we got it right this time, Don. Whether we did or not, whether I'm pregnant or not, it was the best month of my life. Hey, look who's back. Oh, I thought how were you? How was it? <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I would love to talk to you. Aunt Phoebe's waiting for me. <laughs> Fine, you run along. Okay. We have a lot to talk about. Yes, okay. Oh, it's nice to see you. Good to see you. Oh, we have 17 hours of videotape. I'm sure you want to watch. Well, I can't wait to see them. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Was it great? Yeah, it was great. Oh, so good to, good to see you, too. Oh, you look wonderful and rested. You are positively going. Well, you look pretty fit yourself. You know, I think maybe uh, a career woman agrees with you. Oh, thank you, darling. So, listen, tell me how is dear Aggie doing, huh? Well, I'm muddling through. To tell you the truth, I think I'm doing better with the column than I am with my own life. Have you and Langley had a falling out again? Oh, no, no, heavens, no. <laughs> Langley's too busy swimming to argue. Swimming? Uh-huh. That'll become very clear to you, dear, when you meet our new pool man, who just happens to be female. Is this serious? Oh, I can handle Langley's libido. No, what's bothering me, I tell you, Cecily is pushing me right to the brink. Cecily is more sophisticated than you think. Oh, really? She has you fooled, too, hmm? Let me tell you something. That child is very, very naive and terribly misguided in a great many ways. I tell you, I, I'm just going to have to call Bitsy and confer with her. About I it. seem to remember you promising Langley that you would stop your interference. No, you don't understand it. Bitsy has made me in charge of the child's allowance, which is the interest on her trust fund. So it's not interference, and it isn't meddling. In fact, it's my duty. And thank heavens, even Langley seems to understand that critical difference. Fine, fine. If it's not going to jeopardize your marriage, and you have to do what you think you have to do, that's all. You know something? I think I'd even do that if I could stop that girl from consorting with a criminal. I tell you, I'm so fond of Cecily, and yet she just, no matter how much trouble she causes. What are you talking about, a criminal? You mean, you don't know? 
Oh, my dear, that child is, is wild about, she's crazy mad about that murderous Sean Cuddy. So why are you sitting here? Why aren't you on the phone to her mother? Well, now you see what my problem is. Listen, somebody has got to talk some sense into Cecily. Listen, he doesn't know about her trust fund, does he? Betsy, where can you be? Uh, is that lady? Betsy, dear, is that you? Yes, Sam Phoebe. Oh, would you come in here and join us, please? Oh, uh, can't wait till morning. I'm really in a hurry. No, it cannot. Now, you get yourself in here this minute. Except you came home to find a very disturbing situation. A what? You. Any young woman who could find that horrid Sean Cudahy attractive has got to be definitely disturbed. Listen, Cecily, I don't want to give you a hard time. I just think that you should know what kind of a man you're dealing with. Look, I already know. I've heard all the stories about Sybil Thorne, but that was ages ago. The Sean that I know is is very romantic and, and loving and kind and caring. You see? She's completely under his spell. Please, all right, let me handle this. What we need here is one of those persons who deprograms cult members. Look, Aunt Phoebe, you despise Sean. Fine, I get the picture, but that doesn't change the way I feel about him. So what else is there to say? Huh? Well, you know, just sit down for a moment. <clears throat> well, tell her. I will. Just Sean is very skilled. And he is capable of having anything that he has to in order to get what he wants. Prison forced Sean to reevaluate. He has straightened himself up. I wish I could believe that, but I know him too well. Sean Cuddy, he tried to break up my marriage to Tom. He managed to sleep with most of the women in Pine Valley. Um, am I supposed to be tough? Brooke, you were pretty wild when you were young. You told me so yourself. Your generation was like that. When I was young? <laughs> Just like. There's a big difference between being wild and cold calculation. Sean Cudahy is the type of man who uses women to get what he wants. He always has and he always will. I don't have to listen to any more of this. This is very unfair. Cecily, please, wait. <clears throat> oh, now you see what I'm up against. If she doesn't listen to us, I don't know what we're going to do. I wonder. Do they still make chastity belts? Dear sir, I can't help with the cooking. No. You just bring yourselves and that wonderful cranberry cup. All right, I just feel like I'm getting off very easy. I'm just glad that you and Stuart are going to be with us. Oh, that's right. Last year I was living over at Angie and Jesse's and we had Thanksgiving dinner at the Martin. I remember. I remember that was just after you and Stuart had met. And now here we are, an old married couple. It's amazing what can happen in a year. I'm very glad that you're part of our family. Me too. Listen, would you like something to drink? Some soda? No, or... really, I, no. I should be going. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so thirsty all the time lately. You okay? <laughs> no, I just felt a little dizzy there for a minute. <clears throat> it's gone. I'm okay. <laughs> you sure? Yeah. Do you think maybe... <laughs> I'm pregnant? <laughs> I don't know for sure. But you might be. Well, I haven't said anything to Adam, but it's, uh, it's a possibility, yeah. Brooke. <laughs> oh, so lucky. So happy for you. I know you are. Part of me can't help feeling just a little bit jealous, though. Oh. No, don't feel bad. That's just natural human nature. But you have a wonderful little boy. I know. I mean, I think he's terrific. It's Stuart and Scott are the best thing that ever happened to me. They both love you very much. They love each other a lot, too. You should see them together. Stuart's just such a wonderful father. I wish I could give him a child of his own. He thinks of Scott as his own. You're right. <laughs> oh, isn't that typical? 
what? Well, just never satisfied. No, he look at me. I, I have this wonderful family and friends and my husband and son and there are people who are all alone in the world. I'm very blessed. I think a lot of us are blessed. It's just that we, uh, we forget sometimes. Not all the babies that are born to mothers with AIDS have it, but it's just too big a risk for me. I couldn't take that chance. I mean, some of the little babies go so quickly, it's really awful. <laughs> I'm very sorry. No, I'm sorry. I should be concentrating on the family that I have. <laughs> you and Adam are going to have to put up with me fussing over that little baby. And, and Stuart and I will babysit whenever you want. We're going to hold you to that. <laughs> And I hope that if we do have this child, whether it's a, a he or a she, he gets to know what a wonderful, special aunt he has. Please. <laughs> because you are the most loving, sensitive, unselfish person that I have ever known. Well, wow, St. Cindy has a nice ring to it. I have an awfully wonderful sister-in-law. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> I don't mean to keep you. I know you were on your way to Angie's. Um, listen, how is, um... How is the treatment going? Oh, well, I just really don't feel any change. That's why I'm gonna go see her. I'm sure it will take a while you know, to have some effect. But I'm sure it's 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 going to help before too long. Sure. Listen, I appreciate your coming oh, by and helping me. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> All right. Bye. I'll see you soon. Uh, problems? I need a hug. Well, that happens to be a specialty of mine. What's this? Oh, I just sometimes forget that life isn't always fair. None of us want to face up to Cindy's illness. You know, I know that Angie is doing everything that she can for her. It's just that she seems very vulnerable right now. She's kept up a strong front for so long. Stuart, too. The saddest part is, is seeing her getting weaker. I mean, she's so frail. I don't want her to suffer. We have to be strong. Hmm? For her sake? For Stuart's? For that little boy of theirs? I'm getting a little worried about you, my lady. Oh, I'm all right. No, you've been awful weepy, weepy lately. Don't tell me it's my imagination. Or is there something else that's bothering you? You sure? Well, there's something, yes. I thought so. What, what is it? It's good, it's good, so don't worry. I think I might be pregnant. <laughs> Well, what do you think? Well, you know, I mean, you're right. I have been more emotional lately, and I remember. Well, it's it's normal, but I remember when I was pregnant with Laura. I mean, I my emotions <sighs> were up and down like a roller coaster. Why didn't you tell me this? Because, well, I haven't been to the doctor yet. <laughs> you have any idea how much this means to me? Oh yes, I think I do. A son oh, or daughter, a brand new human being. With the best of both of us. Or the worst. <laughs> no, no, I won't allow it. Anyway, we're perfect. Oh, I'm so silly. I almost forgot. Oh, come here, you. No. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a secret. What? There's not a woman alive who is loved as much as you. I want you to remember that. Home. Oh, why are you home in the middle of the day?
Johnny? Is something wrong? No, I don't see anything wrong. Everything looks just right to me. <laughs> You're insatiable, you know. Is that a complaint? <laughs> what do you think of it? You had lunch? Yes. Too bad I was going to use that as, as an excuse for coming home. Since when do you need an excuse to come well, home? Well, I just don't want to appear to be obvious. <laughs> what do you say we go upstairs and fool around a bit? How about a lot? <laughs> okay. Man, I don't believe I caught your name. Butler. Red Butler. Oh, honey. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, listen. Wait, wait. I'm expecting a messenger, okay? All right. Oh, God. Uh, I don't. I don't. Well, I don't. I forgot my key. Doing ringing. Listen, we've got a crisis on our hands. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding, Adam. You've got to be in Tokyo immediately. Damn. I've geared production of my entire microcomputer division around those prototypes. And Takura. Pulls a stunt like this, I'll tell you why. You want to know why? Because they can't stand for an American company to be buying them up for a change. Yeah, well, that may be so, Adam. But you get a plane out of here tonight, you get to their time midnight, and that way you can get some rest. I don't want to go to Tokyo tonight. I don't want to go any other night. I want to stay here with my wife. Adam, I think we can survive without each other for a week. Come with me. I would love to come with you. I have a deadline this week. And don't even think about asking me to forget about it. I got the answer. I cover it. Really, I think I have some idea why they made this move, and I think I can get us both a satisfactory answer. Come on, Adam. I'm ready. I'm ready. It's been a long time since something like this. Let me prove it. They're tough, Ross. They think they put a whole different spin on the art of cutting a deal. I know that. But I can do it. Now let me find out if I can or I can't. Book your flight. Right. Ross Chandler. He has full authority. Good. You know his arrival time? Excellent. Thank you. I look forward to a long and happy association. Sayonara. You're not worried. There's a lot at stake here. Ross is ready for it. Yes, it's time for him to take his job back. And he will do you proud. <laughs> I know it. Well, so much for our plans. I have to go to the office and go over some things with Ross. Well, things could be worse. Yeah, I'm going to be sleeping here tonight instead of on a plane to Tokyo. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to that. Why is it? It's like the first time with you every time. I don't know. Maybe it's the sexy negligee. <laughs> Waste of money. Oh, I love you. I love you. Mm, better get out. Better get out of here while the good is good. <laughs> yeah, come home early. You can count on it. Clayton's office, please? Yes. Hi, this is Brooke Chandler. N no, I'm not yet. Uh, that's one of the reasons I'm wondering if you could give me um, a referral for a, a fertility specialist. 